Yo, what's up, you guys? Happy hump day. <laughs> what's up, you two? Welcome to our uh, Jets Pats pregame discussion <laughs> with our number one Pats fan down there, Mr. Craig. How you doing, Mr. Craig? Good. It's easier to hump a zero and a one record, oh, I guess, tell than me, just tell a me one. About you know? it, <laughs> you, tell you, me you about it, man. Tell me about it. Tell me about it. How are you doing up there, brother? I'm good. I'm good. I'm getting ready. I'm excited. I'm always excited about Jet games, but the Jet Patriot rivalry always gets my oh, uh, always gets you going. Flowing. Yep. Yep. Nice to have some oh. young blood this time around too. Yes. So let me get your thoughts on the release of Cam. <laughs> I don't know. What to do <laughs> <about that. laughs> I mean. Listen, let me start off by saying, as I, I know the, the Patriots and the Jets have a lot, of, a lot of bad blood, a lot of rivalry, but even with Tom Brady, I think some of the most intense divisional games have been the Jets and the Patriots, regardless of oh, their Oh, yeah, absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's, it's, so, I mean, except for the last few years that they've been blowouts, but there were some really good ones between us. Absolutely. Even last year with Cam, you know, I think the Jets were up like a good two or three quarters of the game um, mm -hmm. and they, they really gave the path to run for their money. So Cam Newton getting released. I think he deserved it, quite honestly. You know, it's. I mean, I didn't see a, I, I didn't see a lot of the Patriots preseason. Did he look good? Did he? Stay? He wasn't running. You know, he's just little, little, doing little dink and dunk passes. But, you know, he right. seemed unconfident of his reads. His footwork was not very good and uh i just think mac jones has better mechanics and you know he hasn't been hitting the head as much so so you you feel that belichick wasn't a little worried about cam last time test or not whatever it was that confusion where they thought he had COVID the last time he had to miss the final five practices before week one you don't think that said to him you know what we can't plan with with cam and then this happens and we have to go to the backup. We might as well just get Mac ready and take it from there and let's get him out of here and start the kid. Oh, I mean, I think it's a combination of things if you ask me. But to be fair, last time we spoke, I was saying, hey, let Cam start. But mm -hmm. I, I think it was a mixture of Cam not looking so sharp, okay. a mixture of Mac looking brilliant in the preseason. I think yeah. he's really got his head and his attitude in the right place, too, that just fits, you know, Bill Belichick's mm -hmm. culture. Right. Yep. And at the end of the day, yeah, availability. You know, if you're going to put yourself at risk, and we certainly want to make a vaccine podcast, all the shit show that is. But, <laughs> you know, if, if you're going to put your team at risk or if you're going to make yourself possibly unavailable because the, the rules that are set by your employer, a private organization, yep. Yep. you got to yep. deal with the consequences. No, I, I understand all that. I understand all that. What was... What was the, t even before that last week when all that came out, what was the take up in New England with the beat riders and the Boston area and everywhere? Did they feel that Cam wasn't going to win this job anyway? Was Mac Jones the favorite or? I think I it was a mixed reaction. I'm sorry, go ahead, Kevin. No, I, I, I have to say, I bet he was always the favorite. Cam. Mac. 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 Okay, okay. In, inside the organization. Okay. I mean, I, I would mean, think it depends on who you ask. And, you know, I, I thought it would have been the right move to, to start Cam and give Mac a little bit of time, but I think he was ready to seize the day. And in New England, I think it, it was a mixed crowd. You know, some people were willing to be supportive of Cam. And I was last year, you know, he was thrown into a garbage situation. He had the right attitude. And I think the Patriots players were having fun again. I, I really think that last yeah. year with Brady, yeah. it was an angry year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You did something that, that there was something rotten in Denmark that last year. You realize he was with you guys for 20 years? I didn't realize that. Yeah. Yeah. And his wow. last pass that he threw in New England was a pick six to Logan Ryan. Was it really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. The wild card game. Wow. Oh, crap. Well, do you, do you realize, guys? The Jet versus Patriot record under the Brady era, the Patriots are 27 and 9. <sighs> under the Brady era. That's it. Podcast over. I'll see you guys. <laughs> yep. Because, and the reason, and up until that, up until the Brady era, this was a tight 
this was a close race. Like this was, when you look at the overall standings, yes, now the Pats lead the series 69, 54 and one. But when you're talking about that last 20 years, when it was pretty much, we were leading the series very little 29 and seven. He was that, I mean, a 20, yeah, 27 and nine, I'm sorry, 27 and nine against our team over that 20 year period. This is just incredible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, incredible, crazy. crazy. Those losses hurt, though. I mean, some of the times when they made it count, oh boy, did they hurt. Oh, yeah, like uh, you're talking about 2011 with the I can't wait game. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> can't wait. Anything, if I recall, yeah, cool. Well, you know, I kind of have a special guy staring at you for the whole podcast here Mr. yeah Mr. i see the ghost Mr. of bill parcells over his shoulder too yeah, <laughs> but yeah he, we, he's over there <laughs> before we get into this week's game so let me just read out some numbers between the, the pats and the jets they met they started the series back in 1960 it was the first meeting uh boston beat us she was boston at the time the mm -hmm. second game finished in a tie that was the only tie throughout this series. The Jets in this series once had a nine game winning streak over the Patriot, the Patriots, which was from 66 to 70. We beat you guys nine times in a row over that four year window. Um, the Pats also now have a 10 game winning streak. We haven't beat you guys since 2016. The last five years you have totally beat us all 10 times you played us. And six of our games throughout the years went into overtime with us winning four out of the six. <clears throat> right, oh. Fitzpatrick. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Don't you, defer you your kickoff in overtime, you dumbass. <laughs> Wasn't that where Decker caught the touchdown and jumped yep. up in the stance? Man. Yep, the magical over his shoulder in the corner. Yeah. Hey, Curtis yep. Martin agrees. Yeah. Yeah, see, <laughs> he's always agreeing. Yep. So, I mean, up until the last 20 years, it's been a tight series. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Oh, you know. <laughs> you know. Damn you, Every, Brady. You know, up until Mo Lewis laying out yeah. Drew Bledsoe on the yeah. sideline. There's got to be a statue somewhere of Mo Lewis in, 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 where, you know, in New England, a, somewhere, a, a little shrine. A, a, that a, they pla a plaque on the wall, something. Unsung uh -oh. hero. Yes. So, Kevin, I mean, I'm sorry. Sorry, my bad. Craig, give us your three goods and your three bads that happened in week one versus, your, versus the Dolphins for your Pats. All right, so let's start with the goods. Um, yeah. Quarterback presence, right? Making the quick throws under duress to yep. a insanely good Miami defense. Yeah. Um, the reads looked sharp. I mean, Mac mm -hmm. looked like a confident quarterback. Agreed. Completion percentage, too, right? Um, yeah. I'm going to knock Tom Brady, his last season with the Patriots, whether it was him or his weapons, completion percentage fell way off and the ball was being thrown away a good amount of times. Mm. Um, and I think a lot of this has to do with the free agent signings that happened. Um, number three is besides the fumbles, the running game. I mean, the running game really looked sharp and really gave Miami a run for their money. Okay. Good. Good. But that tailors into the bad things is that this didn't look like a Patriots game that was disciplined. You know, a lot of showboating, a lot of flashiness, wow. and a lot really? of control issues. You know wow. what I mean? Really? Yeah, he doesn't go for that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, a couple things. Like for Matt Judon, after he uh, he put pressure on Tua and, th and Tua threw an interception, they're both sitting together. They're both just like they took a seat on the ground right next to one another. Hmm. Get your ass up, man. What if somebody needed a block? What if you yeah, had a yeah. pick and it was going the other way? Get up, right. dude. Right. Play, play to the whistle. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Come on. I mean, what do I got here? Jones was 29 to 39, 74.4% yeah. last week. Yeah. For 200. They killed us, though. Yeah. yeah. They, always, they always do. They always do. It was a high penalty around for a Patriots game, but okay. you know, for me, it was the unsportsmanlike conduct. I mean, that's that's so against the patriot the Patriot way. Like mm -hmm. I know, I'm yeah, yeah. that's, that's, that's you're not using player. not using your head. You're not being. That's not the Patriot way. Yeah. So 
I, there was that and, and obviously ball control, you know, two fumbles by the running backs when they needed it most. But I have to say before that play, I was looking at Damian Harris, man, and he, you know, dirtied up real good. He's panting on the sideline, sidelines. Why the hell did you put him back in? Mm. I think some of that has to go on the coaches. Situational mm. football. Ramondre Stevenson had a fumble earlier in the game. If you don't want him to go and put Brandon Bolden, he's a veteran. He's yeah. going to play smart. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Put in James right. White. You've got two other backs to go to, and I really think they played it with the wrong personnel in that situation because okay. Harris was out of gas. Okay. How many yards did Harris have this game? I I can't recall. I'll look it up really quick. Um, okay. I was just wondering, was, was your running game working all game for you guys? Were you beating Miami up front? Yeah, so he was averaging 4.3 yards a rush. He had 100 yards on 23 attempts. Wow. Wow, that's good. 100 yards on 23 attempts. And what did your other running backs do? Do you know off the top of your head? I know you have it in front of you, maybe. Stevenson had two or three runs, and then he got yanked from the game after a fumble. I'm I'm only asking because, again, we're going up against you guys this week. And our running game against Panthers was, dis- was disgusting. Pitiful. Pitiful. Disgusting that we had 45 yards in total run- in the total running game. 45 yards. McCaffrey had, be- McCaffrey had more yards than the- – <laughs> Yeah. Well, at one point – Than all of them be- combined, so. Yeah. I- I- at one point in the game, I thought I saw CBS put up a stat saying that we had a total of 80 yards, and McCaffrey had 120 by himself. Right. That's what right. I'm saying. You know. So I wouldn't be too worried coming down here Sunday if I were <laughs> you. If, if, did you see any of the Jet game, Craig? Any of the highlights? Yeah, I watched the highlights that I wanted to ask you guys. I mean, how much of that was pressure? You know, people talk about pressure on the quarterback, but there's pressure to stop the run, too. And it looked like, you know – Zach Wilson reminded me of Russell Wilson running for his life the entire yeah. game. Yeah. 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 Well, well, it's what our quarterbacks do. Yeah. They, they have to, or they're going to get killed. The one thing we've been saying this here for the last three or four years, it's like beating a dead horse. It doesn't matter who's the quarterback. If the O-line can't protect them, build the damn wall. Yeah. You know, we've been complaining all year. You probably seen enough of our podcast to see that this was all one gripe. It doesn't matter who the quarterback is without an old line. Now, in saying that, Zach is definitely more fleet of foot, a little, lot more athletic than Sam ever was. So that helps us a little. But we can't have 17 games where he's running around, chicken out ahead, playing yard ball, and hopefully just throwing it up there and hopefully someone catches it. That's not never, how you win games in this league. Never going to get comfortable that way, ever. And this is the thing that worries me again. And I understand everyone saying, you can't get too high from a week one win. You can't get too high from a week one loss. I get all that. But as a Jet fan, we need change. And we needed it four quarters ago because we've been through this for 11 years now of just terrible football, not smart, you know, just nonsense. Now, again, the penalties are down, so we stopped that. It finally looks like between our first team to our second team to whoever we bring in, we have some ballers now. And you're used to that. New England was the same way. No matter who Belichick plugged in, these guys seem to have gotten the job done. It looks like we're starting to get that feel, but the O-line is going to kill us all year, and they have to correct it, and they have to correct it right this minute or it's going to be another long year, and this act yeah. might not live to see game 17. And, I mean, I'm looking at their completion percentages, both of them. Like I said, uh, Jones was 74.4. Mm-hmm. Wilson was only 54.1. Okay. So, I mean, he, he, if it wasn't for that second half, I mean. How stacked was the Panthers' defense? I, I can't mean, even imagine. I... Yeah, you're right. You're right. I, I don't follow them. I mean, I you know, the, the Panthers defensive front, that that has never stood out to me, but that's partially ignorance. I don't know how good their defense is. I feel like Miami had a great defense, and they yeah, have had that for a couple of years. But, mm-hmm. how, I mean, how stacked is the Panthers defense? Was that a fluke, or were they really up against a hard team? We'll see. 
I, I thought I heard somewhere that the Panthers had a good defense. I heard they had a stout D line. Their D line is much better than their O line. And in saying that, the first half, we couldn't penetrate them if they let us, you know? Yeah, so, right. Right. You know, I, it, it, listen, I'm, I, I'm not going to sit here and get down on my team because the one thing I did like, Craig, is that it was a tale of two cities or tale of two games, whatever you want to say. Two halves. It was, it was just two half game. The first yep. half was how good we looked in the second half. It was almost like everyone on the Jets, even the coaches, was in this like, this haze, this jitter, this fog, like even Sala was in Sala. And then the second half, we started making plays. We started attacking the quarterback. He was jumping up and down. He was pumped. We started rolling out Zach Wilson. When your O-line is not strong enough, you can't have that statue pocket presence. You, they're going to have to roll him out more and figure out how to roll him out more and get passes on the run. You know, that's the only way we're going to survive. Or start going two-step drops, three-step drops, boom, fire it yeah. out, fire it out. I mean, that's what Brady used to do. So, mm-hmm. What is your defense ranked? Well, how is your defense? Well, I think from the appearance on the last game, the, the linebackers looked awesome. Okay. Um, they were getting good pressure. You know, they were they were really given to a run for his money. But mm-hmm. I think the de- defensive front and the cornerbacks are an area of concern. I, I really think Bill's got to hunker down and, and give Stephon Gilmore the money he wants because wow, they, okay. they very badly need another solid corner to yeah. tighten things up. Right. I don't know if it's right. a matter of health. I don't know if it's a matter of personnel decisions. Um, but I do feel like the, the Pats need a little bit more help in their secondary. Okay. And, and speaking of saying, I'm surprised, surprisingly enough, our secondary didn't play too bad. Yeah. I mean, except for, except for a couple big plays. I mean, and, and, you know, McCaffrey all day, but the guy's a baller. So, yeah. And there's nobody like Christian McCaffrey, but with the way that the Patriots like to use their running backs in the passing game. And especially with, you know, last year, Sonny Michelle, he was not so much of a passing threat. They were really relying on James White. We've got three backs that are pretty good coming out of the pass. Again, right. not Christian right. McCaffrey, but don't don't sleep on Harrison Stevenson. I, I'd be a little bit concerned about how they're going to cover him. Wow. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I I hear we're getting Crowder back. He's got one more day to clear, and the we'll get him back. So he'll be in the lineup. That'll help in the slot. So that'll, which will help beating up the secondary too. I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. Which leads me to it. You know, very interesting. I was looking at players that have gone from the Jets to New England and New England to the Jets and some of the connections and stuff like Barrios. What did you think of Barrios when he was with you guys? I mean, judging by the preseason, I mean, he, he almost seemed like an up and coming Julian Edelman, right? Right. I'd say at the very least he's on par with uh, Gunnar Olszewski. Um, You know, I, I wouldn't say that Barrios stood out more or less than Gunnar did, um, but I think it was just a personnel thing, right? They, they didn't need him, so they shipped him off onto the yeah. practice squad and got picked up by New York, but it seems like he's doing a good job with you guys. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So far, so good. You, uh, He was a, I guess, third-round pick of you guys? Fourth-round pick in 2018? Number 210, whatever that was. And I think he played for the Saints for a couple of games, right? And then he got waived and went to New York? Hmm. Yeah, um, I can't recall off the top of my head. I can't. Recall yeah, I don't. I don't got anything on that. No. Could be thinking of somebody else. Yeah, but. nothing about the Saints. Connor McDermott. I mean, he's out for us guys for, for us for the year, but another guy that came over from you guys. Um, who else? Colbert, the safety. Uh. Couple of big guys that you guys got from us, Henry Anthers, defensive tackle. Mm-hmm. Yep, Falk, Falk, nailing all three last week, right? <laughs> well, he's been solid. I mean, I know that the you know Quinn Nordin, where they were high on him for a little bit, but he didn't really seem to have the accuracy. Uh, I know they're both, I think, in the lineup, but yeah, the question is, are they just going to use Quinn for the long field goal attempts and and Nick Falk mm-hmm. for the sure thing? Right. That's not a not terrible right. idea. Okay. No, right. no, no. But you're no. taking up a roster spot for two kickers. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. 
Now, did you have any key injuries after week one? Um, yeah, Trent Brown. Uh, so he yeah. came back from the Raiders, you know, big offensive lineman, yeah. mm -hmm. he in the run game. And I, he had a knee issue, I believe. I'm going to look it up really quick as we're talking here because okay. I don't recall off the top of my head. But he went down and he was taken out of the game. Okay. Um, Man, yeah, we, so got, we, we, we got killed last week. So, yeah, you guys had five injuries, right? Yeah. 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 So, up until that point, was the Patriots more in control of the game, would you say? Because I didn't watch the game at all. And then once he went down, Miami put more pressure on the young quarterback or was it an even keel all the way through? Like even when the backup came in, you didn't lose much. Matt Jones was crushing it from first quarter on, you know, they were really running the ball quite a bit, but when they yeah. put him to task and made him pass, the game just started lighting up and the Pats had the momentum. Wow. Uh, the Dolphins responded in kind. I mean, it was a slug fest. It was yeah, a yeah. really good game yeah. to watch, but I think hindsight being 2020 and a simple minded person like me, like they should have just kept passing and Mac was on fire. Okay. Okay. Hey, if, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Don't fix it. Yeah. Yeah. Go, Again, go with the go with the hot hand. Absolutely. I didn't watch the game, Craig. I watched the highlights, and just to give some credit to your team, which I hate to do, <laughs> Mac Mac Jones looked so poised in the pocket. If you told me he was a rookie, I would have said you're crazy. I didn't see the happy feet. I just saw this calm, cool, collective passes were on the money. Now, of course. The highlights are only showing. That's why they're called highlights. Right. But from what I seen, just a pure passer, guy who looks like he's been in the league ten years already, and you know you that Saban Belichick. Yeah, I was just going to say it's that just, it's that Saban. That yeah, Saban. It's like pure gold watching that that those guys transfer from college to the pros. It seems just like you know they could come in any time and just you know start for the Patriots when. It's, yeah, it was just it and, was just wild seeing. It was just such a smooth for me. My eye seeing it's such a smooth. If anybody trend. knows, if anybody knows about pocket passers from Alabama, it's us. So, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'll I'll say this. You know, I think his best attribute is his brain. Okay. And it, you know, there were a couple instances where he was on the sideline. You just see him breathing, not like he was panting, but he's trying to cool himself down and just okay. like really just kind of keep chilled out. So I I think that his headspace. You know, he threw his first touchdown pass and Nelson Aguilar is trying to give him the ball and he's he's giving it back. He didn't want it. I saw you know? that. I saw that. He threw it down like, I want to no. throw many more than this one. No, it's you like, know? listen, this ain't, this ain't nothing. Yeah. Yeah. We don't, he, and he, they didn't, you know, they didn't win the game. He would have felt really stupid if he was showboating. So I, mm -hmm. I think that he's kind of setting the stage as, as a leader. But hey, listen, it's his rookie year. He's going to have growing pains. He's going to have yeah, bad games. They, they all they, listen. All these rookie quarterbacks are going to have growing pains. So. But all right. So, how many times do you know off the top of your head? How many times was he sacked? How many times was he he hit? How many times was he under pressure? Do you know all that you have that on those well, numbers? His, his first pass, he threw backwards to Johnu Smith, and it was a okay. fumble. Okay. <laughs> so that first pass was an absolute slop. So he did have a fumble. It was recovered by the Patriots. Okay. Um, but, I mean, I have to say this. I think he maybe had one or two sacks. I'll look it up. Okay. Um, okay. But he was I'm – only, I'm, only, I'm only asking because I also want to know, and this is your team, so you'll tell us, as long as the pocket stays intact and he could stay back there, he's going to be fine. But how will he handle a team where maybe the offensive line can't protect him and they're coming at him? He's pretty slow. Like he's not fleet of foot. And that's got to worry you a little if you're going to get a, a, a D line that's attacking the quarterback all day long. Like, are you worried about mobility? I, I mean, I thought, honestly, there was a lot of pressure last game. The Dolphins were okay. really, okay. really holding it. And he had, yeah, he was sacked once last game. He was wow. really doing a good job of just getting the ball out of his hands, making quick okay. reads and good decisions. Okay. Um, you know, they, they'd have little routes where they're getting it to the running back or, you know, maybe a receiver who's running a crossing route that's not too deep. But mm -hmm. that's what they're there for. He knew yeah, his safeties. Yeah. And yep. he was getting the ball out of his hands decisively, okay. which is something that Cam Newton was not doing. He was taking okay. a lot of hits, holding on to the ball for way too long. And it was really refreshing just to see 
get rid of the thing, man. If you're somebody, under pressure, somebody like, throw yeah. the damn ball. Exactly. Yeah. 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 I, I was just wondering how he would, cause he doesn't seem fleet of foot. So I was wondering if there was a lot of pressure on him or the pocket stayed nice where in our case, Zach was running around the whole time. But there, was, insane, there was no pocket. No, but in saying that Craig, as he started rolling out and rolling the pocket away from that pressure, the kid, be, the kid lit up. Like if you would have watched the first half and then an hour later came back to watch the second half, like, you know, you would have saw a whole, you would say, is this the same kid? Is this the same mm, quarterback? Yeah. I mean, the numbers from him, let me see if I can find his numbers real quick. First half, he was six for 16. Second half, he was 14 for 21. That's a big difference. You that know? is a big and, difference. And, and two TDs. Yeah, and two TDs. And he scored a two-point conversion on his own. Right. Uh, yeah. So he definitely – so for me, the excitement is there. But then again, you know what I relate this to? The excitement we had, at least I had, when I saw Browning Nagel light it up. Yeah, I was just going to say. I was just going to yeah, say. I'm that. sorry. That, because I want people to know, like, Kev, we're not these these – Jet fans who are just hopping on doing a podcast, we don't know what we're we've been here for a long time. Like, there's a lot I'm worried. There's a lot I like, Craig, with this team, but there's a lot I'm worried about with this team. You well, know, what about the play calling? I mean, how much of that was adjustments, you know, versus preparation? Well, you see what you just said? Adjustments is a word that Jet Nation doesn't know for the last three years because we've That's never right. made any halftime right. adjustments. Th th that was a curse so, word around this organization. Again, all you had to do is be a football watcher like yourself and see the difference from the first – and on offense and defense. The first half compared to the second half, it was a tale of two games, Craig. Mm -hmm. if, if, if we would have came out of the tunnel in the third quarter and that was the first quarter, we would have beat the crap out of the Panthers. I don't care what anyone's in. Now, you could call me a homer. That's fine. Hey, a homer. We did everything right in that third and fourth quarter. You know, and we were pressuring Don. Sorry, Kevin. We were pressuring Donald. He was zipped, quick to throw. He wasn't, you know, connecting with his receivers as much. We were hitting him in the mouth a couple of times, you know, and it was it was starting to gel. And I'm hoping now, coming into playing you in week two, our home game. Nothing against you, you're my boy, but I want to hit you guys in the mouth right away and not fall asleep the first half and be down fourteen nothing and have to play this catch up game. So mm -hmm. I do like the adjustments we made, and I'm hoping yeah. that carries we'll over the week, the week. But well, I mean, to be fair, just because you're talking adjustments, you really don't think like Adam Gates would like you know scratch his nuts and maybe move him to the left or right on a hot sticky day. <laughs> yeah, that was his, some type yeah, of adjustments. That was his adjustments. But Craig, we have to tell you the rule on the show is we we clean that slate. We don't mention <laughs> he, he's like Voldemort or whatever that from Harry Potter. He yeah, right, right, right. Named anymore? <laughs> we try. <laughs> and I mean, I see away with that. As as we wrap this up here, I I, I see that uh, Belichick was up to his old tricks this week. You know, blowing smoke up Zach's <laughs> rear end, <laughs> saying now, oh. How he's, uh, how he's unbelievable how he gets the ball out of his hands and he gets out of trouble on the run and he can make all the throws and oh my god he's just like you would think he's Joe Montana the way Bill was describing him so Craig before we wrap this uh, I'll let you speak first and then I'll ask you my questions go ahead yeah well I, I would say that I would hope the response to that is some good size coverage right some some good rushes that are really getting him uncomfortable and unsettled and really forcing him to make mistakes. Because if you've got somebody like Zach Wilson where he's relying on his athletic ability, and if there is a bad O-line, tire the dude out. Get him running all game long. Mm. Mm. Right. But remember, if you're making him run all day long, your defensive linemen are running, running all, all day yeah, long. Yeah, getting no. tired as well. Yeah, but I would, core, we've I, got would Matt Judah, I would, I would, Tower Van Noy, right? Yeah, you're, you're right, they can keep you're right. Up. No, you're, you're right. right. So, before before we end this, so two quick questions now because I don't know if we asked you the first time we had you on after week one. Now, what is your team's record? Are they a playoff team in your mind? What, what, what is the final record for your team? 11 wins, 
they've got a lot of talent, but the question is how are they going to use it? That's the okay. biggest concern in my mind is, you know, right. the, the Patriot way. I hate that term, but everybody okay. uses it. You've got a lot of no-name players that look good because they're doing as they're instructed. Okay. You've got a lot of hot-headed free agents that, are, you know, are full of smoke, ready to go. And are they going to fit the mold? I don't know. Okay. But okay. if you had to ask me, I'm, I'm going to say 10-7. Okay, 10 and 7. Okay. okay. And the big question, not that you're going to shock anybody here. <laughs> what is your prediction for Sunday and what is the score? <laughs> I'm going to say 28 to 14 Patriots. Wow. All right. Okay. I'm, so I'm, right, I'm, right, I'm writing it. I'm writing it down. <laughs> Write it down. Write it down. Okay. I think I think I think one touchdown of those is going to be defensive. Whoa! Uh, I, you, you might not be far off. Okay. So. All right. I will hold what do you guys. To- got? Come on! I'm not going to be the only one calling. All right. Well, <laughs> of course. All right. You, know you go. For, you go right. first. I'm I'm writing all these down. So you know what type of Jet fan I am. I'm a diehard. Of course, my heart of hearts, I have them winning. Again, I have them winning another one of these low-scoring battles. By the way, I was the only one last week who had the Jets-Panthers at a low score. Everyone had these ridiculous scores, what they thought it would be. Anyway, I'm just I'm just patting my back for a second. <laughs> I think it's going to be a typical Patriot-Jet game, 21-17. Of course, I want it to be us. When I did my predictions, I picked that we would lose to the Patriots. I only have us winning six games. So I do think the Patriots will probably win this one. But I'm a Jet fan, so I'm going to say us for the sake of this argument, 21-17. Good man. I appreciate that. Yep. Okay. Kevin? (laughs) I'm going to – all right. I thought about this. I'm going to say 19-17. And I'm going to say our kicker slash punter. Well, he's not that anymore. Not anymore, yeah. It's going to nail it. And MetLife is going to go insane. Maybe he'll pull a Doug Flutie drop kick while he's at it, right? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. So I'm saying 1917 New York in a hard-fought close game. I'm going to say I'm going to say it's going to be a defensive game. Yeah, I think they're always. We're, we're gonna we're gonna expect the offenses to do it with the two quarterbacks and everything, but it's gonna wind up being a defensive game. All right, well, and, yeah, and, let's, and, let's, and and decided by the kickers. Okay, let's raise the stakes on that a little bit. The closest one gets a six pack of beer shipped in from the other two. How's that? There well, you go. Sounds like deal. a plan. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. deal. We're all, all right, pretty. Right. We're all pretty. We're all pretty. We're all we're we're all in the ballpark. We'll see yeah. how it goes. Yeah. Well, Craig's got his team blowing us out of the water. So we'll Yeah, we'll I know. <laughs> He's got a Wilson butt fumble on, yeah. on the menu. <laughs> I know. Hey, don't don't ever don't ever doubt the Patriots when they're pissed off, but I'm gonna be in New Hampshire on Sunday. So I'm I'm not even catching the game until I'm home. Oh, so I'm, shit. I'm hoping right. to shut down my internet and having no spoilers until I'm back. Uh, no. All right. Well, well you, you either way, to, either way, we won't message you and, and let oh, you know. You don't want me to text you that mac and cheese through an interception to Mosley 50 yards down the line, and that's how we won the game. You don't want to know that. No, just <laughs> I mean, if you want to apply it, you could send me a picture of like mac and cheese like being smothered by a kid or something. But no, I mean, yeah, no spoilers, right? You got it, man. And uh, right, Curtis, brother. Curtis is saying, "Yeah." <laughs> all right, brother. Thanks again for hopping on with us. You're one of the best. Keep watching us. Let everyone absolutely, know. brother. Here's we'll to a good guys. game. All right. Yeah. Thank you again. Anytime. You got it. We'll talk to you later. All right, later, guys. Goodbye. All right, See you. That was fun. Pretty always good. good pretty good, man. Down, man. Always, always yeah. pretty good. Yeah, he gets our juices going a little. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be fun. Yeah, yeah. Now, now I can think about him up in New Hampshire while I'm watching. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I might have to break his jobs and, and text him the scores. Yeah, yeah what the? Yeah, yeah, there you what go. What the hell? <laughs> Give yeah. it to him. <laughs> yeah. Careful what you wish for. That's true. That's oh true. man. All right, All right bro- my brother. This was this good. Was fun. Yep. Yep. And uh, we'll see you all this weekend, right? 
Yeah, we'll Saturday, see, we'll episode 26. Wow, 26. Yeah. Looking yeah. forward to it, man. I am too. All right. You have a great rest of your day. You all have a great rest of your day. And we'll talk to you on Saturday, all right? Get up. Yeah. See you all later. All right.